100th Grand Prix start for Australian Remy Gardner, joined on the front row by the Italians, the Gian Antonio. On your second row in the top six, Robert and rookie Ayagura completing that way Navarro and Nicolo Bulacor. They all move up in a warm crash this morning. Former Motor 3 about 16th, a bit further down. Lorenzo Baldassare took a tumble. 23rd, Tom Luti, the wily old campaigner there, the Swiss rider, 25th head of Montella and side Harder, he's in for the injured Barry Baltas on the uh, NTS chassis. Let's see what he can do in um, the exit of turn one here. It can happen in Moto2, but it's time for action. Who will be Vic... Oh, sorry, I thought uh, the mic came on then uh, from that side. An excellent job two weeks ago to come through from the third row of the grid to win. Uh, such a cool head, a mature head like Ralph Fernandez. He'll have his work cut out though, trying to get ahead of his teammate Remy Gardner. And a four point lead in the World Championship, four between Gardner and Fernandez. Savlo, fourth round. And what can Fabio, the Gian Antonio, do? Can he repeat his emotional heroics of the opening night? Rosini with a fantastic charge through to the podium. There is the championship picture going into round four. Gardner lead two points, then back to Sam Lowe's. And Marco Bersecchi with a bit of early ground to recover. But Seki's looks mentioned in both Doha battles and also in Portimao last time out when he looked like he built up quite a, a comfortable... Yeah, Portugal was so odd, wasn't it? The race really turned on its head about three quarters of the way through. Will we, rear? Will we be hearing the Australian national anthem in about half an hour's time? Goes up onto the second row and there is Sam Lowe's number, 20, 20, uh, number 22. He'll be hoping he... For action in Moto2 here in the Red Bull Grand Prix of Spain. There's a problem further back for Sonkia Chantra. Well, the Gian Antonio and Raul Fernandez also coming through into turn one. It will be Digia who takes the lead. Judge where his starting position was. The Gian Antonio, though, that leads going into the second corner. He made the dreams to third. Yes, yeah, Sam Lowe's is then up into... Uh, sorry, it's Augusto Fernandez. I saw the elf uh, Mark V, Raul Fernandez and uh, Chabi Vieque ahead of Sam Lowe's and Joe Roberts. Yeah, not the ideal start at all for two Grand Prix and he's got a bit of work to do here. Oh, Somebody's Bez. coming from way, way back. Somebody tagged the back of Sam Lowe's there. Kobezeki there. I don't know what happened. We'll have to see a replay. That was so much going on into turn six. Yeah. But he went straight on and went to third. What? Raul Fernandez into fourth. Ramirez riding like a man possessed at the moment. I'm sure it was him that came. Marcos Ramirez here this weekend. He's wearing his proud lime green, the colours of Andalusia of course it's very much his home ground. very very tight indeed it was a tight line that Lowe's had to run as it just compromised his exit speed looks like it and to turn one we go Lowe's there side by side it looks like with Marco Bedsek a little bit later on than this he's getting his nose blooded somewhat at the moment is the Italian no dramas for them other Italian start he's almost half a second clear of Paul Man Gardner the Grassini rider hasn't won in motion who's up uh, MotoGP bound, it seems, in 2022. Yeah, looks like he's going to be part of the still up for, for discussion and debate. Will Grazzini go with Aprilia and stay with that associate? Rossi will run a fully-fledged two-rider factory team in MotoGP next season, so quite a lot to be decided in terms of the right. Fernandez on Fernandez in the battle for third there. Number 37, Augusto. Now, as he tries to make a move through, will he do it into turn 13? No. Yeah, Sam Lowe's has got quite a bit of an early recovery job. The slipstream, surely he'll pull the pin now and move up into 30. Does into turn one. Oh, and he sits a goal from the younger of the pair, the most inexperienced in Moto2. The Gian Antonio's got his head down and got some really comfortably the fastest man on circuit. Couple of tenths quicker than Gardner and Augusto Fernandez. 41.524, and already there you can see seven tenths he's got now on Remy Gardner. He's got time, he's got ample time, 21 laps to go, but with the pace that the Gian Antonio's oh, running... Oh, so his head, is he going to get back on his feet? Oh, yeah, with Augusto the greatest Fernandez. respect to Sam Lowe's, I just thought, actually, look at uh, him, and it's Augusto Fernandez, who's really good recent performances. He was looking for a third. His wretched form continues. Bulliger hobbles away. Hum Turn six, yeah, he just couldn't hold on there. That's just uh, breaking himself. Bulliger. He, and unfortunately, the front end giving way. That's just, well, Nicolo Bulliger now, it means he's hot. Yeah, and Lowe's now knows he hasn't got to contend with trying to find a way through on his teammate Fernandez, who's already down, so Tamayo bikes ahead of him. There's Remy Gardner, Akiyo's rider.
or both of his riders. Still out front though, De Gian Antonio builds his lead, he's up to eight tenths clear now. Into this Moto 2 World Championship, the Japanese rider on course for yet another top ten. On board here with uh, the riders that lead, of course, the championship. He'll have his eyes firmly fixed on these two. But when the grip went away, particularly in that rear Dunlop tyre, to have something that just allowed him, once he got to the front, he was able to streak away in my life as he starts to come under a bit more threat from Sam Lowe's in fourth. Well, what we do know about Sam Lowe's here so far, when he's got into his rhythm, no one's been able to touch yeah. him. As we go across the line, then grid has crashed now at turn 11. The tie rider that's the fast old crash, oh, he's that holding his good, right, does it? it? Yeah, barrel bike. rolling. Oh. Yeah, bike and rider go tumbling oh, quite a lot. The Mitsuhana on a team major rider. Credit here to Gian Antonio, Steve. First time now, he's eaten his advantage out to over and quite got this kind of early speed that the Italian possesses. No, but Gardner's and Antonio to maintain this pace the whole way through. Is yeah, and of course, to, to, to run this pace, Steve, I mean, how most? Because he fell back a long way after going straight on at turn six on the opening lap. Here in Jerez, but not during the Grand Prix, thankfully. It was post-race, wasn't it, when he tangled with his teammate Luca Marini. In terms of the races, things just sort of settling at the moment, and then it all sort of goes a bit mad late. See there in the background, Vierhe is holding off the charge of Agura, and it's a hard charge as well coming here, hey, and then see if he's got the, the pace to maybe get in touch with that quartet ahead of him, the likes of Gardner, and about how quick yeah. Ayagura is. He's doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Well, let's not forget as well, Vier Ayagura's fourth, and he's not looking like a man who's well over 90 races, lesser ex Cost Ramirez connects 10th, and it's Schrotter, Bobier, and Navarro, and that is Hector Gustin's place when he went down, but it's been a, a rough old start to 2021, unfortunately, for this year. The front end going for him in the Pedrosa corner. Similar crash to what happened to Bouliger and Fernandez earlier in the Grand Prix. 21 is badly overdue a decent result. Thought he might be on to something in Portugal with a top three in a couple of weeks' time. Across the line, a fastest lap personally for De Gen Antonio. Decky, either the 41-6. Remy Gardner was back in the 42s on that. Rear end slide there for Sam Lowe's. That will give him onto the back straight. I really don't want to put the mockers on Fabio de Gian Antonio, but last year there were some times before, and I'm sure that will be in, on his mind as well. Uh, Fabio de Gian Antonio at the moment. At the moment, he's got a 1.7 second lead over Remy Gardner. We're on board here with Raul Fernandez. Lowe's and Betseki behind Gardner have perhaps got that slightly better speed to, to try quite clearly at the moment he's not got the pace to go with the Gian Antonio ahead of him. It's like there's a bit of lunge into turn 13. So the Gian Antonio is going to come over the line to start lap. Beautifully done. Textbook move that up the hill into the first corner. Sam Lowe's wanted to try and get back on the, the cut. Yeah those two have had a fair amount of battle royales in the past haven't they? Beseki and Sam. Distance and nobody's got anything for him right now at this stage of the race. No, he's the only rider, well, him and Bedzek turn six, yeah, that's, it's, uh, that, as you were. That's a significant gap he's been able to pull, isn't it? When you look at the on both, than Remy Gardner. So it's not even close, it's not like he's just stretching out a tenth. There's only seven laps gone, there's a lot of race left here as Gardner then drops back. To wide open at turn ten, it wasn't, he got it slammed shut in his face, and in turn he loses a place up this fast place to be overtaking so can Raul Fernandez then and now having got past his teammate via the Gian Antonio yeah, and again Steve the Gian Antonio another 41-6 that's about three in a row first corner second time he's made that move he gets great drive coming out of turn 13 with a bit of slip streak got into the first corner oh, around turn four there again sliding Sam Lowe's and five we go let's get through the next sector and find out whether or not Raul Fernandez is just cut. To put a bit of daylight though already between himself and Gardner in third. That gap's already got up to about three tenths. He's got the, the better edge grip on the left side there coming through turn number seven. And Gardner's out a little bit wide coming through, aiming up a little bit better through the fast corners. A lot less breeze, in fact, hardly any. A very accomplished performance right now by Fabio De Gian Antonio. He's just doing mid 41s for this quartet behind him on that last lap again. We're still in the 42s. Will it change this time around? Now Fernandez has got that clear. First time in a long time, the Gian Antonio is not the quickest man around this Jerez circuit. Decky. It's a matter of time now before the Italian surely 
tries to pick off Gardner, who in the opening stage. Fabio de Gian Antonio it would be this is a factor, but it, it may well be. It was certainly a factor in the past. As Besecki now fires up the inside of Gardner. If you get past, make the move straight back. Take it back. Remy Gardner has had problems with his natural physics. And when you look at Fernandez ahead of him, much shorter and much lighter. I'm not saying that is a factor, but it's Sam Lowe's has just dropped a couple of tents actually on Gardner and Bezeki as well. So he's uh, Chavi Vieja in sixth, who's still just about ahead <laughs> of uh, Ayagura. Ayagura must be sick of the sights of Vieja. He's got Kinect for company. Ramirez still in the top ten. Cameron Bobier doing another good job there. He's in 12th spot. I mean, his form has just dropped off a cliff, hasn't it? The Bosca Scuro chassis was on the good rhythm here. He was doing 42 twos, 42 threes for a couple laps. Now he and San Antonio in this comfortable lead of over two seconds. You know, Fanati touched upon this, Steve, in Moto3. I mean, a little bit. I wonder if that was the case with Gardner, maybe. Benzeki has gone through on Remy Gardner. Yeah, that could be the case. Uh, struggling to run the pace here at the moment, isn't he? Let's watch a replay of the start of uh, this race then. Up to Gian Antonio to take the lead of the race. And that was really the last time anybody saw him. Yeah. Lowe's at 141.9. Um, struggling to stay in the 41s. Hey, this yet. Yeah. But Sam on the opening couple of laps had to work very, very hard just to get himself into continue sixes that Gian Antonio has done. Incredible speed and consistency to match it at the time to the Gian Antonio, although he's mighty, mighty close. And again, it's Gardner after a couple of the 42s once again and now dropping back into the clutches of Sam Lowe's. You know, in Moto, much what he's doing here. Moto 2 is such a difficult class. And championship leader going into Le Mans. Yeah, he would be. There's Which a couple of, uh, incredible. Uh, Gardner again spinning up that Dunlop tyre through turn number eight. That pretty much since the get-go. And still, Vierge resisting Agura. Something pretty special in the next few GPs if he's to hold on to that ride in the Petrona Sprinter team. Yeah. Silly season has teams. He's been in Dynavolt Impact. He's been in Mark Vidius Racing. Teams that have got proven in there and Petrona Sprinter Racing. Oh, oh Albert Arenas. It's not been a pretty weekend here. No, the yeah. race fair night. That's not his first crash of the weekend, unfortunately. Do you remember it was last year where he had that monumental crash at turn oh. 11. Still two and a half seconds the lead here as we reach the halfway point of this Moto2 race. The Gian Antonio well on top. Back into turn six. I I'd wager that's probably double figures now in terms of lap times in forms like that consistently not putting a foot wrong and that's the reason why he's building on his lead out front at the moment Simon uh, standing toe to toe fighting it out for fourth place Gardner here just up uh, Raul Fernandez yeah we're only just over half race distance is a long way to go here for Gardner the live championship there'd be 20 points between four riders yeah it, <laughs> it was Sam Lowe's I think 02 and right now you've got to say it's going to have to take a, a late disaster, really. Yeah, but you've just got to admire the man's consistency. There's no deviation in lap times at all. Just If you're listening to us in the uh, IPF truck, guys, uh, we'd love to see a, a lap tally. I actually think it's not the first time. He's actually done a 141.647. I think that's the second time. Really giving up the ghost here. He's still doing high 41s. He has to because he's got Vesecki breathing all the, all the way down. He's not a league of his own. Pure brilliance by Fabio De Gian Antonio. Able to get close to him since. Well, anything but a 41-6 now would be a disaster for Fabio. <laughs> Got that two and a half second lead over Raul Fernandez, which is a very nice, comfortable, terrible, absolutely shocking, abysmal 141-773. <laughs> Slightly on that last lap, it was a 41-5 from both uh, Fernandez and Bedzecki oh, for the earliest opportunity. They've got three riders here this weekend. Baldessari, Corsi back in action. We've had it. Do you know what? They've all been big. Jack Miller mentioned yesterday about the size of the, the gravel. Baldessari and Corsi yeah. in action this weekend, and I'm not being funny. The spare parts guy, Envy Agusa, needs a holiday. Uh, physically, the bikes certainly aren't. They're battered and bruised. They're going to need the week off to four fronts. <laughs> they can't run three. All three riders are perfectly A-OK, -okay, because that was a fast crash for Corsi going into turn number 11. Three Grand Prix with a broken wrist. Further back, there's not much change through the order. In 15th place, ahead of Ben Snyder and Dalla Porta.
Another high 141 then. Yeah, and Gardner has just started to warm up ever so slightly. Is it yep. too little, too late for the Aussie or in his Mark VDS machine? Yeah, we said what a tough task it might be for Gardner to hold lows at bay. Of course, it's an even first time. Now, yep. is there going to be some late pressure? There is no doubt about it, Matt, despite the brilliance of Fabio Di Gian Antonio. Given when he looks at that pit board and he sees the gap coming down, at the moment it's fine. Anything above a second. No. She wasn't he when it all went horribly wrong. Fingers crossed for him and the Grazzini team after all they've been through so far. The pressure's coming though from the rookie sensation, Raul Fernandez. So Fernandez there with Bedzeki hot on his tail. Bedzeki at the moment looks well set for his first podium. Easily managed that to the end of the race. If it starts coming under two seconds, right now this is just a test of his. He's been able to be fast and consistent. And yet again now he's sort of locked into the 41 nines. Under two seconds. Seven laps to go, and Ayagura still can't find a way through on Xavi Vierhe. The fight for second and third. And at the moment, you've got to say, Lowe's is running out of steam here in this podium. But he was the quickest of the top five men. No, not quite, but there's no overtaking going on up ahead to slow the pace down. It's, it's not going to be quick enough yeah, to and try and, and fight And like through. you said, Steve, same Dunlop tyres, same electronics. It's very, very hard to make up the difference, isn't it? Head. Now coming up to the fast yeah. turn 11, did bit a bit of a wheelie. Did a very good second and third sectors on at the start of this lap, and he's found three tenths already in sectors two and three, just to strap to come down. Oh, we're looking here at Benzeki challenging Raul Fernandez. They're side by side, and he does go through. Nice stuff. Six, I believe, sir. Yes. <laughs> Another Another one. One. Yes. Gardner's just said his fastest lap of the race. He still fancies a podium to mark his century of Grand Prix appearances. And this has been a good ride, actually, by Betsy. Twitch on the front end there for Raul Fernandez. That's what yeah, that's what running wide. Yeah. Betsy, the chance to get it down in the dumps, the first a few GPs. The gap well, now 2.7 seconds out. Valentino Rossi is unveiling plans for a two-rider MotoGP team. Marco Betsy will have appetite for destruction. He's got an appetite for some Prosecco right now, hasn't he? Remy Gardner's at the moment we're just about hold on to a championship lead by one point as they pulling away now the advantage is the biggest it's ever been in this Grand Prix 2.8 seconds it was through it's down to 2.5 so Veseki really strong in that four sector on that previous lap it's not put a foot wrong such a likeable popular character isn't it full of very difficult start to 2021 with a sad loss of Fausto Grazzini, complications from Covid. Not sure. Yeah, and if he is to set foot or wrap his leg around a brand new Aprilia RSG, Selvin Fernandez. Fernandez trying to hunt down that gap to the Gian Antonio. Looked in. Fernandez right now struggling. As you'd expect, you know, let's, it's easy to end of race scenarios in Moto 2. So these kind of little blips, they are going to. Remy Gardner knows as well, Steve. The World Championship leads up for grabs here. Here he comes. Up the inside into turn 13. No. This is all about the championship. Yep. All three of those guys know it as well. Priceless and precious championship points up for grabs here. Yeah. For the second yep. place as well. It's not a huge surprise to see four of the five fighting here. We expected to see them. Raul, my hands up. Given how strong we saw Lowe's. Gardner and Betsecki in the winter and on Fabio De Gian Antonio having yeah. a couple of podiums in the first four, including a runaway start of the opportunities and he's blown them. But hey, I hope we're not putting Ooh, the cars. Gardner. Gardner's got him way, way Whoa. too hot. A bit like what Gardner did to Joe Roberts for the podium at the last corner, or well, the last couple of corners in Portimao last time out. He made the mistake and sadly he did, so the hard work to do all over again for Remy Gardner. My, my, this A5 splitting the top three as things stand. That would be awesome, that's how we like it, going in top on our 2021 schedule. Fabio de Gian Antonio is about to cross the line and is just with five seconds clear, yet another 41, seven for him. Incomplete his to lose yeah. now. Oh, Fernandez is getting really, really twitchy and nervous as he came through to Anria. Sam Lowe's trying to get himself back on the podium after have been lighting up inside that helmet when he saw those two moments at turn two for fernandez there's still a long way to go in turn six on lap 21 and it's number 22 who's trying to find a way through onto the podium Lowe's. now with sam Lowe's, we either hunt in the battle for the final podium space 2.8 seconds clear out front now is dejan antonio who's just got two and a bit laps left just a link
Yeah, is Sam close enough? Not right now to have a look into turn 13. Him as well to try and fight from fifth. We saw how aggressive he's happy to be on the final lap last night. That guy is normally so silky smooth and clean that his bike's never out of shape, never out of line. So it's quite easy. To Want to look at Sam Lowe's because all of a sudden, Remy Gardner has gone from fifth to thinking he might be on for third. This could be uh, pretty interesting in the last couple of laps. You've got to think that for himself up here for a lunge at turn 13. He wasn't close enough to Sam Lowe's there. Three foot that Fernandez can do here. He is now starting to look like a bit of a passenger on top of that Calex chassis because Remy Gardner as well. Doesn't look like he's got an awful lot of tyre left in him. He's just desperate to try now. Yeah, now then Sam Lowe's. The gap to Betsecki while well, one point surrender a podium here after his exit early on in Portugal. We for second. Sam Lowe's. Is currently in third. Remy Gardner four tenths away from the podium. Look at Ralph Fernandez on the last lap. Yes, okay, he's a long, long way clear of Chavi Vieira. Burnt out those tyres. That's all. That's all down to experience. Nothing more. It has been coming down the back straight. Just lighting up that rear tyre. Looks like he's got. A I think he'll be all right. Yeah. Probably, actually, if Sam Lowe's looking at this, all this spot spots are maybe. Tribute to Fausto Grassini just by being on the podium, but we've not seen anything like this from no. the Italian. It's been an outstanding game here today, is that Sam Lowe's actually a fair effort here. He's really closed up to the tail of Marco Bedzak. Looks like it's going to be fourth place for him. Fabio de Gian Antonio, please don't do that. He's celebrating early. Now, we've seen this a few times. Fabio de Gian Antonio, outstanding win. His first in Moto2, and it's an Italian 121. Sam Lowe's returns to the podium in third ahead of Remy Gardner and Raul Fernandez but when Bobier's gone down on the very last lap he was fighting for the top 10 what a job the tears will start flowing again that was an absolutely faultless and flawless performance by Fabio turn nine on the very last lap when there was a top 10 beckoning some really strong rides in that race Marco Betts front on the last lap a well-worn front Dunlop tire just couldn't take it anymore Happy Siren might be willing to get his bike started again. Well, that's Look, the only mistake he's made. That's the championship. Gardner somehow holds on to the... That was the last time anybody really saw him. His advantage at one stage was as high as 2.8 seconds. I say a troubled start to the year, but perhaps lower than expectation start. Lowe's does take third place quite comfortably from into a podium, but Gardner will go to France as the world championship leader. Fernandez just hit a bit. When you see his pace late on, it was amazing, actually, that he was able to keep Gardner and Lowe's behind him for as long as what he did. Ready for this young man. You can see the tribute to Fausto there on the back of his leathers as well. What up, Jim? His first in Moto2. Probably should have already had one in the bag, having some of the opportunities that he missed last.